So we just heard the first part of this story, and that involved Max Planck. And that was, again, the year 1900. All right, so the next part of the story is that we've got to speed up five more years to the year 1905. And now the scientist that we're going to study is Albert Einstein. Now, Albert Einstein had a really awesome year in 1905. Not only did he come up with this idea that we're going to talk about next, but he also in that year came up with his famous equation equals mc squared. He also talked about came up with his theory of relativity in that year. So 1905 was a major major year in the life of Albert Einstein. And so this is like the crown this is like the third part of his his work in that year. So Albert Einstein after thinking about relativity, after thinking about uh, you know, mass and energy, he actually tried to solve another major problem in physics, and this problem was called the photoelectric effect. All right, so let me explain how this photoelectric effect works. So the photoelectric effect the photoelectric effect goes like this. This is a phenomenon. in which electrons are ejected from the surface of certain metals. Exposed to the light, exposed to light, of a certain minimum frequency. Now we call this, when we're gonna talk about this a little bit more, we call this the threshold frequency. Okay, so that's it. That's the photoelectric effect. Now, I got a picture down below that kind of explains this a little bit more. So let's take a look at this. So what we're doing is shining light onto a surface of a metal, okay? Now, if that light has enough energy, what it will do is dislodge an electron from the surface of that metal and that electron, when it's dislodged, is going to hit this cathode, this positively charged plate. And then what's going to happen is eventually if we hit enough electrons, this meter is going to rise. And so we can tell if, the, if we're dislodging electrons because the meter's running. All right, so that's, that's the photoelectric effect. So the number of electrons that were ejected from the metal was proportional to the intensity of light but the energies were not proportional. And that, li it, that lies the problem. And that, that's, that's where the problem is. So what's going on? So the number of electrons that were ejected were proportional to the intensity. So the more intense light, more electrons were ejected. But that doesn't mean that the energies were proportional to the number of electrons or the intensity of light. So there's got to be, how do we work in the energies into all of this? Now, because of, of this problem that the energies were not proportional to the, the intensity of light and the number of electrons being ejected, we couldn't explain this by using 
wave theory by using our normal classical physical means. So Einstein had to try something new in order to explain this. And what Einstein said, Einstein's idea went like this. Light, which is a wave, is made up of particles. And this was actually a really big idea. This is this was like a completely out of the box idea. So you've got light which travels as waves, but inside the waves you've got solid particles. And he calls it that these particles have a special name. These particles are called photons. Okay. And so Einstein stated that the energy of the photons can be calculated by using the Planck's equation E equals H nu. And we just talked about that in the last video. And so what he said was that if the electrons from the metal are held in by attractive forces, they're going to need energy to dislodge them. And that energy is called the threshold energy. And again, that's E equals H nu. Now, if we shoot a beam of light, again, again, think of this, that light, it's made up of waves, but you got particles inside that wave. If you shoot a beam of light onto the metal, we dislodge the electrons, but only if the light is at that threshold energy. If it's below, it does nothing. If it's below, the electrons stay in place. If it's above that threshold energy, yeah, you dislodge the electrons. So if light of higher energy is used, then not only are electrons going to be knocked loose, but they also pick up some kinetic energy as well. So... Einstein came up with this equation to help us out. So he said that the kinetic energy of those electrons that are being dislodged, that are being knocked loose, this is going to be equal to H nu, which again, this part, this is the energy of the photons. Okay, so this is the energy of your photons that are knocking the electrons loose, minus something called the binding energy, BE. So BE, this is called the binding energy. This is the energy that keeps the electrons in place. Okay, so if you know the energy of the photons, H nu, and you know the binding energy, if you subtract the two from each other, then you get this kinetic energy. That's how much energy that these electrons will have once they're dislodged, okay? And we tend to see that, and this is, this is going back to the beginning of this photoelectric effect, the more intense light, the more intense light, that meant that you have more photons to knock around. And so that's that's kind of where this is all going with. So we have a way to kind of relate the intensity, the number, the energy of the of photons to the kinetic energy. So to summarize, well, one more thing before we summarize. Let's say you have two beams of light. They have the same wavelength, but the only thing that they differ in is the intensity. So let's say one beam has twice as many photons than the other then the more intense beam is going to dislodge more electrons. So to summarize everything that Einstein came up with, he said this, the more intense the light is, the greater the number of electrons emitted by the metal. Okay, And we also found out that the higher the frequency, the 
of light, the greater the kinetic energy the, the ejected electrons had. Okay, and so that was that was again that those are the conclusions coming from from Einstein on on <coughs> excuse me the photoelectric effect. Now this threw scientists for a loop. This was a major issue because not only not only excuse me does this sorry not only does it solve the photoelectric effect, but describing light as a particle was not consistent with. The wave behavior of light. So that was that was a really big move. That was a really bold move on Einstein's part. So again, this threw scientists for a loop. Because not only did it solve the photoelectric effect. But describing light as a particle was not consistent with the wave behavior of light. Okay, so the only way out was to accept that light has both wave-like and particle-like behavior. And that was a that was that was a major major conclusion. So this actually makes up the first part of something called the wave particle duality. And this is actually a major idea in quantum physics and quantum mechanics, because it says that light, which is a wave, has particles contains particles and we know these particles to be called photons and that means that particles like photons have to travel in waves and so that one contains the other or the other or the one behaves like the other that was a major idea and that was actually this was the first point in time where scientists began to realize that the laws of classical Newtonian physics don't necessarily apply to atoms and molecules. And so what we're going to do next is take a look at another major theory of the atom.